Okay, here we go. Did you get Jaina AOTC? Not yet. What are your thoughts on wild population and what the current population is? Uh, it's low. That That's my only thoughts, really. Hello, everybody. My name is Anixium, okay. also known as Jarl and Thoriel, and welcome okay. back to another exciting video where we are going to talk so he about has a tabard. Elder That's Scrolls cool. Online. So, like, you look at that armor. I, I want to go ahead and just pause right here. You guys love it whenever I pause on videos, so I'm going to do that again. You look at this armor. It looks pretty cool. Now, does this armor look badass enough for me to want to waste a thousand hours to try to get it? No, not really. But it does look good, which is a start. Okay. Thoughts on the game now, so I far. know what you guys are thinking. You guys are thinking to yourselves, Nixium, I played that game when it came out, and it sucked. And you know what? Yeah, you're right. It fucking sucked. Okay, so Elder maybe Scrolls now it's Online good. Online had an absolutely terrible launch, and hey we all know that but since then okay. Zenimax entertainment has put a lot of time and effort into patching the game fixing issues adding more content and so i decided to give it another chance and i've been playing okay. it over the past few weeks so i wanted to do a video where i would share my thoughts on what i like about the game and what i dislike about the game and maybe offer you guys a potential new mmo to explore if you're in the market to explore another MMO. So okay. let's jump straight into the positives about the game, shall we? The first thing we need to talk about in this game is the character customization. Now I'm not talking about, you know, adjusting the nose and the mouth and all that crap. That stuff's fine, but I'm talking about being able to create any kind of character that you want in this game. Elder Scrolls Online is more of a true RPG in the sense that you can really make any kind of character that you want. Do you want to be a badass wizard who uses staffs and yeah. wears heavy armor? Yes. Well, you can do wait, it. Wait, what? Do you want to be a rogue that heals people while wearing light armor and like a robe or something? You can do it. The game really lets you be anything, even some weird combination. I think that's cool, right? That's obviously cool, but let's be honest. There's always people that play a meta. So if you see a rogue that's healing, you're like, oh, wow, that's like a survival hunter now. I just won't invite them to my group. So I, I think this is like a very, sur this is a surface level good thing. But in an MMO, like I think it's a very unique thing that happens in MMOs that is not really as present in games like, uh, like Diablo or like Path of Exile. Whenever there are obviously like the best builds, but you don't necessarily have to play those. The difference is that in MMOs, you have to play with other people, and whenever you involve other people, the group's needs come before your own. And even if that's not something that you feel, the other people won't invite you to play with them if you're not going to put your best foot forward to make your character as good as possible. So I, I don't know really if that's going to work. And it's the same as like WoW, right? Where like if a character or a class or a spec has a bad like perception in the community, then everybody's going to fucking hate it, even if it's not actually that bad. <laughs> ...that you wouldn't expect, and that's really cool. I mean, hell, if you want, just be a crafter. Just a pure 100% crafter. That actually game. is Do really it. cool. Whatever I like that. And I like that. Having that freedom in an MMO, I think, makes the MMO a lot more colorful and rich, and it makes the replayability a lot, uh, Probably right a lot better. At least I think so, anyway. The second thing you're probably going to notice as you play the game is first person mode. Now, first person mode in this game is really cool, but it's not something you're going to be using all the time. I mean, if you're PVPing or doing a dungeon or something, you're probably not going to do it in first person mode. I would hope you've got not. A really big dick. Okay, w which I don't, so I don't. Well, think I, that's not. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. But if you want some really cool role play ish gameplay, all the if time. you really want to get into the world, going into first person mode can be an absolute treasure. Kill so it. It's Kill something it, unique to the game, and oh, I, I think ran it's away. cool. And I wanted to put it on the list. The third thing okay. I want to talk about is the lore of the game. This is the Elder Scrolls that we're talking okay. about, and anybody that has studied Elder Scrolls lore even a little bit knows just how rich 
the Elder Scrolls lore is. The universe is teeming with information, information about various characters and guns. I played Oblivion for like 200 hours. Aside from knowing that there was a king that talked to me, after those 200 hours, I had absorbed zero lore. If you were to ask me anything about Oblivion, like where did it take place, anything, I have no fucking idea. All I would do in that game is go around and kill people and collect their swords and put them in my house. That's it. I didn't do anything besides that. That's it. Odds and events, some of which contradict each other, and you gotta you gotta sit there and think, man, what what is the truth behind this world? How do I interpret all these events and these characters and these actions? And it just is a very rich and compelling world that sucks you in. And even for someone like me that's not a massive fan He's of wearing the tips Elder out Scrolls shirt. lore, I found myself reading a lot of books in this game and paying attention to the quest lines and just I just really got into it. So the okay. lore and how expansive it is in SO, that's that's a plus for me. While playing the game, I have also found that exploration is heavily rewarded. You Ow. will be walking through the world and you will find quests as you travel. You'll find sky shards, which are used to unlock more points that you can spend to customize your character. Just unlock the You'll find treasure chests and a whole lot more locations, world bosses, and just a lot of stuff. And that's a real pleasure when it comes to an MMO, especially for someone like me, because I like to explore. I like to go off the beaten path and find my own way. So having an MMO that doesn't hold your hand and you can just go out into the world and see what you can find, I like that. The cr that is fucking amazing. I want to say that right now. Uh, there are a few quest lines and like little quests out there in the world. And like if you're a vanilla WoW player, you might remember these. There was one in Winter Spring. Whenever you crossed the Frost Whisper Gorge, there was this weird guy. His name was like the Lorax or something, and he would give you a quest. Uh, there were other quests in like Tanaris where you had to help a turtle get all the way back over to Gadget Sand or whatever the fuck, right? All of these little quests were that they added a certain amount of vibrance and life to the world and now i don't really think that we have any of those like there's a few quests that are just like ah, you know like maybe we can go out of our way to do this but I, I i don't know if this is just like an outcome of data mining or whatever but i i do feel like there are a ton of like yeah yeah the the mechanical chicken was another one um <clears throat> excuse me uh sorry i, I usually i have like a lot of I don't know, I have like weird stuff with my throat going on, which is why I talk oddly sometimes. I do apologize. Uh, there was like this thing over here where if you killed the Yetis, you would get like this magic fucking uh, uh, chicken item that would like summon a chicken. And it was just all these little things. And wow, it's like, oh, oh another one, an easy one that a lot of people probably remember from uh, the WoW Classic beta is if you type slash cluck or slash chicken at a chicken at the farm here, eventually you'll get a quest that gives you a chicken like that kind of stuff is really fucking cool and i wish wow had more of it crafting in the game is very interesting as well now if you've watched any of my other mmo videos you know that i'm a big fan of crafting nixie is, is a big fan of crafting yes i am the crafting in this game has a How's bit of a learning the curve on? to it because you can do things like research <laughs> new like traits and you can also upgrade your items okay. and it requires these potions and the point is there's a bit of a learning curve but the crafting in the game is interesting and it has an actual progression feeling especially as you put more points into crafting because then you'll be able to see nodes lit up in the world you will have that a actually is worker cool. that will work for you and they'll deliver stuff to your mail every day delivering like crafting so materials it's a Harrison guy and yeah there's just a okay. lot of really cool things to unlock as a crafter and you can even make furniture for your house as a crafter and uh yeah speaking of houses player housing 
The player okay. housing in the world has a lot of depth to it. I love going into a dungeon, killing the final boss, and then mounting their head atop my fireplace. That is awesome. A lot of the stuff that wow, you're going that to seems fill your familiar. house with is going to be things that you find out in the world, or they are going to be things that you craft at a crafting bench. There's also a lot of cool stuff you can get off the Crown Store too, which is the Elder Scrolls Online's version of that's their like cosmetic shop thing. But if you're not a big fan of player housing, you're probably not going to be interested in that. There's just a okay, lot of so recipes that, to find all throughout the world. Like the player housing and everything, that's something that's exciting to me. But I'll be real. Whenever I did put, whenever I had my stash in Path of Exile. That shit was a rat's nest. Like, I just literally, like, I took an open space, and I was like, you're standing here, you're here, you're here, you're here. Here's my bench, here's the enchanting thing, here's the map tool, here's Xana, here's the stash, and it's just a big fucking rat's nest of garbage. Let's start. I, I mean my stash in Path of Exile, specifically and there's lots of different ways to decorate your homes and there's tons of different homes to choose from with many different themes located all across the world and it just uh the game just has a nice variety when it comes to its player housing the world is also very interactable and what i mean by that is you can pick up you objects trees. you can search in barrels you can sneak into people's homes and steal things you can pickpocket npcs Ooh. you can kill npcs if you want and i like that, that. Leads to some really interesting gameplay that makes elder scrolls online feel very different from other mmos that i've played for example you can play as an upstanding warrior who does no wrong and you go around and you smash bad guys heads in with your axe or you can play the game completely different you can be a backstabbing rogue who sneaks into people's homes steals their stuff assassinates them while they sleep and then have a bounty on your head where you have to sneak around through your towns and you have to dodge guards and then you have these underground thieves guild-esque bases beneath city it's kind of weird whenever he's talking about this kind of stuff because you think about all the different parallels to wow like wow used to have all of these things you killed anixia anixia's head went on stormwind you killed nefarian same fucking thing uh if you're hated by a city after you've killed a bunch of stuff you've got to sneak by there all the time all of these different things like i, I really wish they still had more of them and, and like now it's just not the case at all it's very disappointing yeah, you fast can forward sell to your stolen yeah, I know. goods, and you can also get bounties cleared off your head so that guards will not kill you on sight. And it just, it really makes you feel like a rogue. It makes you feel like an assassin and a thief if you go down that style of gameplay. And that's really cool. There's a lot of replayability because of how interactable the world is, and I love that. In regards to PvE, something that I've been doing a this lot is of is I've about. been tanking as yeah. Jarl and Thoriel. And tanking for me in this game has been a lot of fun. The tanking for me has been really cool because of the fact that it's not this auto AoE taunting nonsense that you see from other MMOs. It's a lot of single target focus and it's just a lot of running around and it requires a lot of paying attention and I like it's that. It's a nice shield. As a tank, I'm also buffing my allies all the time, making sure that they're protected with shields and whatnot. And uh, the, the tank really, the tank experience really makes you feel tough it makes you feel like a tank like you're running around and you're actually a part of a battle and that's good i enjoy that now i know not all of you care about pve you don't give two shits about pve it's all about the pvp man and the pvp in this game is absolutely fucking incredible going to cyrodiil and doing sieges fighting with your friends like timing abilities off of each other so see that that's what really matters is up. like the it's so you this is what i've been waiting to see is that like all these other nice little goofy fucking bullshit things is oh wow you can eat a fucking chicken leg and break into somebody's house and go do bounties and all this other bullshit like i i mean like yeah that's cool but like really like whenever you log on and you've played the game for a month like what do you log on and what the fuck do you do and like it, this is what i care about is like the emergent player behavior this is what fucking counts oh cool defending keeps and attacking them 
I love it. And I've even crowned an emperor in this game over on my stream on Twitch. Yeah, we got together and we captured all the keeps around the Imperial City and we crowned an emperor. The point is the PvP is interesting. It's fun. However, there's still a lot that could be said about PvP and I'm gonna talk about that later. Now, the final thing that I wanna talk about is the combat point system or the champion CP. level system. And oh, that's for is, Elvine. Is, well, here's how it works. When you hit level 50, which is the level cap in this game, you continue to level, but you level by getting champion points. You progress in power, much? essentially. You can then take these points and you can spend them in these various trees where you can increase the healing that you receive or how much damage you do with your attacks. And Ooh, essentially that's the you just make your character more and it's more a, powerful. It's actually more a fucking bear. That you get. Now, the cool thing about this champion point system and the reason why I like it is you get these points by doing anything. Okay. You can get them through crafting. You can get them through doing dungeons. You can get them through PvPing. Or my favorite is you can get them by leveling alts. You see, once you unlock these points, this champion level system, it also unlocks on all your alts as well. It's sort of your reward for hitting level 50. That's and really now, good. And now all of your alts, you can put these points in where you can make your alts even more powerful so that your alts can smash through the levels even faster while at the same time gaining more points so that's for like the CP wounds, system. Except for you get some out of it for your main. Battlegrounds and yada, 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 which also apply to your main. Okay. That might sound a little confusing, but here's a chart. Look at it. That's how it works, kind of. <laughs> okay. All right, let's get back to the Yeah, review. that makes perfect but sense. But anyway, those are 10 positives that I have chosen from Elder Scrolls Online. I could have chosen a lot more, but I'm just kind of keeping things short and simple for the sake of the video. I don't want to go into too much detail. Okay. Otherwise, we're going to be here all day. But we can't just talk about the positives of the game. We have to talk about some of the negatives as well. Some yeah. things that I've noticed about the game that I don't necessarily hate, but they're definitely worth mentioning as cons. So let's start with that. Number one, the first thing that stood out to me as a con in this game was, well, it's really cool how you have this super in-depth ability to customize your character in any way that you want. But sometimes what happens is certain classes can create these builds that are incredibly powerful incredibly powerful to the point that it takes like 20 plus players just to kill one guy because their build is so op oh so they're blood death you knights say, nah, Nixie, okay there's no way dude like I, no i'm telling you like yeah. i fucking streamed it That's like simple. some of these guys are absolutely unkillable like it takes an entire army to kill them it's insane it's insane they're just like massive like buff people and it, it's crazy. And when a bunch of like people run around in a group together, yeah. constantly buffing each other, sometimes you can't fucking kill anybody. And yeah, some some people are just a little stupid OP, and that that stands out to me on the PvP front. But yeah, still fucking awesome. I still I love think the so. PvP. The second thing to talk about in regards to PvP is this isn't really like a con. It's just more of a criticism. It's just the fact that I really want to see more come out of the PvP system in L. That's a con. Like. You shouldn't be able to 1v20 people. Like, that. That that's a con. And you couldn't do that in Classic. That, that, that's a fucking con. And why not? Well, it's like, okay, so it depends on why is somebody that powerful. Are they that powerful because they've put 10,000 into the 10,000 hours into the game whenever everyone else has put in like 50 or 100 or 1,000 maybe, then yeah, maybe we can have a conversation about it. But if somebody is just playing a certain build that makes them innately this powerful, then yes, I would consider that a huge fucking con. Absolutely. There's scrolls online. Right now in Cyrodiil, you have the whole, you know, sieging keeps and burning down fortresses and so on and so forth. And that's really cool. But something that I want to see going forward is more bases, more ways to siege castles and stuff. I want to be able to, like, scale the walls with ladders. I know that in the next expansion, they're going to create things where you can get these legendary weapons to destroy walls in one oh, hit. Oh, wow. And I just want to see more things okay, added that's cool. to the Cyrodiil PvP scene because yeah. I, I think there's a lot of potential there that is yet to be tapped. And I want to make a video talking about that more in depth. 
And the final thing that I'd like to say is okay. a con, and it's not really a con. It could be a pro, depending on who you are. But we'll see. The end game is very grindy. Because once you hit level 50, it's just a grind to get those champion points. And although I think the champion point system is interesting and cool, and I genuinely like it, for some people it might come off as being very grindy because you get these points by doing quests and PvE and PvP, and uh, maybe you just want to be max level and have all your points and that be it you don't want to grind 700 champion points you know what i mean so what the fuck that could be a con to some people I'm but assuming you only get like one a day exploring the world and continuing to progress your character i don't think you're going to see that as a con at all overall though i have had a ton of fun with the elder scrolls online i've been playing this game every single day almost playing as my dragon knight playing as my sorcerer and just having an absolutely freaking epic time playing with you guys on Twitch. I hit level 50 on my Dragon Knight. I'm currently grinding out the champion points. I'm doing the veteran dungeons. I'm excited to do trials. And although I'm still relatively new to the game, I think I've gotten a nice good taste of it. And I felt like it was time to make a video like this where I would share my thoughts. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this look into the Elder Scrolls Online and into my mind. Now, would I recommend playing Elder Scrolls Online and giving it a chance? Yes, definitely. If you're someone like me that played the game back when it first came out and you didn't okay. like it, dude, like, right oh, here, Oh, this man, is a I was, boss. I was there too, man. To I, I get it. But I played it again, and I gave it another chance, and honestly, I'm having a blast, and I think you'll have a blast too. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on the Elder Scrolls Online. If you'd like to see more Elder Scrolls Online content from me, Leave a comment down below in the comment section because I'd love to, I'd like to talk a little bit more about the PvP and the PvE and some of the systems and more depth down the road and share my full thoughts on them. But, you know, in this video, you gotta, you gotta kind of, you gotta keep things like short and simple. Otherwise, this is going to be a long ass video, but uh, just leave a comment down below and maybe say like, oh, Nixium, maybe you should talk more about the PvP or, I don't know, feel free to leave a suggestion. But either way, guys, thank you for watching. Thanks for listening. I will see you all soon with my next project. And uh, I guess I'll see you in, uh, in Cyrodiil. Okay. Um... Wow. Uh... I don't know. What do you guys think?